Baketopia is a baking competition show. There's 12 episodes and HBO Max released them all together, which I'm really happy that they did that because that's how I personally like to watch television and my shows and my series is I binge watch them all together. So they're all available now. They're out all together. And it's basically a baking competition show where each episode, there's three bakers, three new bakers, three new contestants that compete to win it. I think what I love most about the show is that it's not a got you show. When we're casting, we're casting bakers who are really talented and I get to showcase other bakers skills and abilities and the whole world gets to see what they can do and that's something I really love about the show. Yes, what makes this baking show a little bit different is that I love baking competition shows. I think I have seen almost every single one of them. I am a baker myself and I love watching food shows. Mm -hmm. So we are challenging bakers to not only make these gorgeous dishes in a limited amount of time, but to make trendy desserts. And that's something I really enjoyed watching and seeing what they do with it. We have two judges. We call ourselves the Cake Council, the <laughs> three of us. And it's uh, Donald Skian and Timbo Sullivan. Timbo Sullivan is just a veteran of cake artistry. He's been on a bunch of other baking competition shows. And he's such a talented cake artist. He just knows what he's doing. He is a pro. He teaches classes. And we met on a baking panel and we just hit it off. We had such a fun time. We said, let's collab. And then our families met. We, we just loved each other so much that that turned into, you know, board game nights, dinner nights, drinking bottles of wine and becoming really good friends. And when we met Timbo, we just had the best chemistry. I'm a huge fan of Timbo. I admire him so much and I just can't believe he's a judge on our show. It feels surreal because when you look up to somebody and then you get to work with them, it just makes you kind of glow every day when you come into work because you're like, I'm judging with Timbo. I can't believe it. The production company who I love was really sweet. They trusted me with wardrobe decisions and I wanted to have a little bit of fun with it. So instead of sometimes doing just a traditional dress, I mean, one of my outfits you've seen on the poster, I look like I'm in a loofah. Um, I look like I'm a cotton candy clown. And that was intentional. I was so obsessed with the idea of this show that I went all in. Even the fashion, even the shoes. I have one of the shoes today and it looks like cookies and cream. I had them custom made. So each pair of shoes that I'm wearing to go with the outfits looks like an edible food. Like it will look like an ice cream cone or a piece of cake. It was just so much fun. Another way that I could just be creative. Oh, it's one of my favorite foods, definitely. And there was a few outfits that haven't been seen before. They were my backup outfits, which they were all approved. I had to make decisions. It was tough. I had to cut some decisions and I didn't want to, but they're also, they're locked, they're loaded, they're ready to go. They're in my closet. So at a moment's notice, I can pop into another dessert. <laughs> The internet always surprises me. Sometimes I'll make a dish and I think it will be really popular. People will really like it, but it's a dish sometimes that I was just making because I thought, oh, this is cute. And that gets really popular. So it, it's so interesting to me what food dishes get popular. And you know who makes those decisions? That's Mr. Internet. I've been really loving trying to make some of the food trends, recreating the food trends that I see on TikTok mm -hmm. and seeing which ones actually work and which ones don't. That's been really fun for me lately on YouTube. I've been doing that. And my favorite one is still that holiday hot cocoa bomb. If you've seen those, those chocolate spheres where they have hot cocoa mix and marshmallows inside. Yep. Then you pour hot milk over them and they just bloop. They open, they melt open and pop open, and you've got the yummiest little cup of hot cocoa. I just watch the food trends on TikTok and YouTube that's 
all I watch. I even when I'm watching my news, mm -hmm. I go to food news first. So I'll see which companies are releasing new flavors, like if they're having new cookies and they have new flavors and I love trying everything. So I'm just really a foodie at heart. I love food and I love how creative people are getting with it. So I, I just watch all those and see. I really want to try, and I haven't tried it, and this isn't a, a sweet dish, it's a savory dish, but have you seen when they'll take a tortilla and they divide it into four, mm -hmm. four is like a quad, and you put an ingredient on each quad and you fold it together and then you kind of grill it. Yeah, I want to do that, I haven't done that. Absolutely not. When I started YouTube, I don't think YouTube was even monetizing at the time. When YouTube first came out, it was just a free video platform service. I personally was thinking in college, like maybe I would run my own website as a job. And I was watching all these food bloggers in college and I thought, how cool, they food blog for a living. And this was their job and I thought, that is so neat, I want to do that. And I could never afford to do that because is hosting your own videos, I wanted to do video versions of that, was really expensive. Uh, um, maybe people don't aren't aware of that, but when you have your own website and you host your own videos, it costs like 30 grand a month just to host your own videos. So it made me um, an entry level food blogger or someone who aspired to do that or be an entrepreneur. I didn't have any financial backing like that. So YouTube was just wonderful. I thought, this is an amazing service. And then when YouTube started to monetize, I thought, what? This is incredible. So something that started as a hobby turned into a part-time job and then a full-time and then eventually a career and a brand.